Despite, or perhaps encouraged by its controversies, the Monster Hunter survival game PAL World has captured the internet's attention in its own PAL sphere of influence. Players around the world, both at home and in the realm of content creation, have leapt to get this refreshing take on the monster collection genre of spin, and doing so, they found an addictive world of both wonder and familiarity to adventure in. There's no question that Pal World carries its inspiration for the despotic king of creature collection games, Pokemon, on its sleeve, which makes it predictable that fans of Pokemon would attempt specialized runs known as Nuzlocke in Pal World. However, Nuzlocke rules were designed for the typical turn-based random encounter role-playing games that Pokemon is known for, and in spite of its many similarities, Pal World is not such a Pokemon game. With other heavy inspirations such as Ark Survival Evolved and Zelda games like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, it is clear that the standard Nuzlocke rules cannot play justice to the heart of why Nuzlocke was created, to give an appreciation to the deeper mechanics and less popular creatures of a monster collection game. The following rule set is one man's attempt to capture both the love and importance of each creature in Pal World while placing more emphasis on the environment, survival challenges, and sense of adventure the Palapagos Islands have to offer. Hello, I am Kalarmi Adaya, and this is my take on a Pal World Nuzlocke. Welcome to the Pal Party. The rule set is broken down into segments, so feel free to navigate in the chapters below to each area you wish to. But first, a note on the world settings. The Pal Party rule set is designed to add more enjoyment and flair to the world of the Palapagos Islands. It is meant to be accessible and customizable for each run so that players can enjoy the challenge at any level they wish. As such, it is asked only that you leave the raid settings on as the fail mechanics of the rule set rely heavily upon the raiding mechanic. All others can be tailored to your playstyle and desire for a challenge. The game rules begin upon obtaining your first PAL or setting down your first PAL box. You may prepare as little or as much as you wish prior. The objective is to conquer all towers and bosses on the map while successfully defending your base and keeping as many PALs as you can alive. The rules for obtaining pals are quite different than the typical Nuzlocke rules, so please look carefully. Rule number one, you cannot catch pals with pal spheres. This also means pal spheres cannot be crafted, but exceptions can be made to clear the tutorial if you wish. But items and pals gained this way are not a part of the pal party run and should be discarded. Pal spheres can still be collected through all non-crafting means and sold at markets but you may want to hold on to the best of them if you wish to use the optional rules later on in this video. All other means of acquiring pals in any applicable way is fair game, which includes rescuing a pal from faction camps, hatching a pal from an egg in an incubator, or purchasing a pal from pal traders. However, please note, the first pal of a species obtained becomes locked and cannot be replaced under normal circumstances. This pal must be named, and all duplicates henceforth are named fodder at the first opportunity. Fodder may be used as materials for condensing, butchered for drops, or sold for currency, but have no other purpose in a pal party run. While most Nuzlocke's are designed to force you into playing with the first pal you obtain for the sake of bonding with them, the pal party rule set loosens this restriction due to more difficult mechanics shown later in the rules. Additionally, being able to personally choose which pal is more suitable for working, defending your base, or being part of your battle team allows you to choose your relationship and therefore your connection to your pals beyond simply fighting out in the field. Base management, design, development, and defense are part of the primary mechanics in Pal World. The Pal Party rule set places greater emphasis on creating a singular home base players will settle into and grow attached to. The base is the village of pals for the run and a core component for survival and defense in both Pal World and the Pal Party rule set. The first pal box you set becomes your permanent base and may not be relocated normally. This base cannot be put in a location that cannot be raided as it is essential to the run. As a result of this restriction, all other base permissions become known as camps to the rule set, which we will go over shortly. While there is no mechanic currently available for this in the game, it is encouraged that you name this base for the sake of immersion and attachment, much like naming your pals. When first creating your base, the number of incubators and breeding farms you are able to create are restricted to one. 
This becomes a progression mechanic later in the game. All available pals that are not named fodder must fill the available base slots for pals. Fodder cannot actively be used in base and must remain in the pal box until consumed. Camps are pal boxes that are not used for primary base and come with their own rule set. The idea of a camp is that of a temporary residence primarily used for your party members, like camping in locations in RPGs. You may have a few chosen comforts similar to a town or your base, but they are, by their nature, limited. With that in mind, we'll go over the rules. First, camps cannot be placed within 200 meters of a base, a tower, or a traveling point. This is important to prevent exploitation of the world travel rules we'll list later, as well as encourage exploring and finding more remote areas of the world to camp. Camps can contain up to four food, production, or PAL structures at a time. However, it cannot contain beds for PALs. As PALs in your inventory regain sanity based on your own bed and sleeping habits, this is to prevent overusing your PALs from PAL boxes. You are free to use your base slots with PALs in camp but they won't be able to rest properly and you will risk both their health and sanity. All other structural items such as lights, foundation, and furnitures may be used normally. Finally, a player may freely teleport from base location to a camp. However, if the player teleports from camp to the base, the camp's pal box must be destroyed via the option in the world menu immediately after. Structures that survive this process may remain unless a failure condition is met we'll be going over failure conditions later on in the video. Here are some additional rules that tie up some loose ends, such as travel and progression. The islands are absolutely littered with fast travel points, making the game itself easy to travel from point to point in an effort to speed up processes like exploration and base development. However, in the PAL Party rule set, the travel points can only be used to return to base. The only fast travel points you may travel back and forth to freely are the towers you have defeated. Additionally, you may unlock one of the additional breeding farm and one additional incubator for each tower you have defeated, making tower progression a crucial component for the game. And now we get to the dangers of a PAL party run, the failure conditions. These rules are designed to add the element of risk and consequence and serve as the tragic necessity for any story up to and including its end. So with that said, here are the failure condition rules for the PAL party rule set. Any named PAL in a player's party or base that faints for any reason is permanently killed, and no other PAL of the same species can be used to replace them. The player is locked out of that PAL species as playable for the remainder of the run. All fodder of that species can still be utilized normally. However, if the player faints, all pals in the player's position are considered dead and locked out of use as if they fainted as well. This means failure in a tower fight or a dungeon can drastically alter the player's course in a pal party run. The player fainting in camp or fleeing in camp during a raid destroys all structures, supplies, and active pals deployed at that location on top of the normal player consequences should the player faint. The resources remaining in camps must be abandoned or discarded manually. Fleeing a camp does not mean the player must abandon the use of a camp, but it does mean they must start over. Fleeing a base during a raid additionally destroys all pals and fodder in the pal box, and the base location is no longer usable for the remainder of the run. A player cannot place a new base or camp within 200 meters of the abandoned base location. However, if the player is defeated while defending a base from a raid, the run is over. The run will also end if the player is defeated while having no pals in their party. These are the only two conditions in which a pal party runs ends. For a multiplayer run, all rules treat every player in the game as a single player playthrough meaning pals are divided between the players, no two players can have the same pal, and a pal that is lost by one is lost by all. Also, if any player dies without pals or dies defending the base, it ends the run for the entire team, so be sure to protect your allies. So that covers the base rules for a pal party run. But as an added spice, there is additional mechanic for the PAL Party rule set that offers a mechanic I'd like to call Alpha Illusion. 
alphas are a core component of the game and come with additional size and better HP stats. Lucky pals are similar, but also come with the lucky trait, which also increases stats. This comes with its own upsides and downsides as larger pals may be hit with more specific moves, although the benefits may be worth the cost. With this in mind, these rules present another form of progression for pals. With these optional rules in effect, a player may choose to attempt to swap a pal for a lucky or alpha version of the pal if certain conditions are met. Here are the details. The base pal must be at least two stars in progression, and the player must have defeated the boss of the tower nearby if there is one available. The base pal must be the only pal to challenge the alpha or lucky and must remain out for the duration of the fight. Normal defeat consequences for the player and pal still both apply. To attempt to capture the alpha, the player may only use five spheres from the spheres that they have collected throughout the world. Regardless of whether the sphere connects, they only get five attempts. If the alpha or lucky is defeated, or the five spheres fail to capture the pal, the attempt to alpha vault ends in failure and the pal may not attempt another alpha illusion during this run. If they succeed, however, the original pal becomes fodder and the alpha or lucky pal adopts its name and takes its place. An alpha can attempt to alpha evolve again into a lucky if the chance presents itself and the conditions are met again. However, an alpha cannot attempt to alpha evolve with another alpha, and the lucky is the final form and may make no future attempts. These rules are designed to add an additional twist of progression that makes dives into non-arena dungeons more valuable than simply raiding for treasure, as many pals only have alphas occurring in the random dungeon areas. It also places greater emphasis on luckies, which would have otherwise never been used in this run. And that concludes the Pal Party Nuzlocke rule set. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration to play. If you've made it this far, hello. My name is Kalar Miyadaya. I'm a fan of stories and gaming and media, and I'm looking to reattempt content creation after a 10 year break from my last attempt. If you're interested in seeing how this rule set plays out, I'll be streaming live at Twitch at twitch.tv slash along with a few other titles, both old and new. Here on YouTube, I plan to view games and gaming through both a technological and a storyteller's lens. It is my hope to share my passion of viewpoints on the industry, both historical and current, as well as share a few personal story bits of my own avatar on the side. If this sounds like content you'd like to see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if this video was at all fun or helpful for you, feel free to leave a like. Stay tuned for socials such as Twitter, Blue Sky, and Discord, and I'll see you next time.